Welcome back. In this video, we are going to review our angles and things that we learned previously in geometry. So, angles. Angles are formed by two rays that share the same endpoint. And that endpoint, of course, is called the vertex of the angle. So, if I have, say, ray B A and ray B X and they share the same endpoint B well B is the vertex of this particular angle and the rays make up the sides of the angle so my angle is right here made up and we would name this angle A B X the angle is going to be named by its vertex. We could also name it angle XBA, and since there's only one angle at the vertex, we also could call it angle B here. And we measure angles in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So this is just a matter of precision. So we're used to measuring angles in degrees, but if we want to be a little more precise, we can go to minutes, and even more precise, we can go to seconds. A minute is one sixtieth of a degree. So 60 minutes will make up one degree. And 60 seconds will make up one minute. So 3,600 3, seconds will make up one degree. And you may need to convert degrees from decimal or fraction form into minutes and seconds or vice versa. So I may ask you to add 51 degrees, 29 minutes, and 32 degrees, 46 minutes. Well, we can add these together, 32 degrees, 46 minutes, and if we add those together, it's 15, that's 75, and that's 83 degrees 75 minutes. Well the 75 is more than 60 so we're going to add another degree to give us 84 degrees and 15 minutes. Now we want to convert that to decimal form. Well that 15 is really 15 sixtieths which is one fourth or 0.25 or a quarter so we have 84 degrees and our 84.25 degrees really would be a better answer there. So 84.25 degrees. Why don't you do some subtraction? Subtract 73 degrees and 12 minutes from 90 degrees and then convert your answer into decimal form. Okay? So we're going to subtract from 90, and of course the single tick mark here means we have zero minutes, and the double tick mark, zero seconds. Here is an example uh, of a couple angles here. Let's call this angle A, and our angle is generally going to initiate here um, on the horizontal axis. Um, this might be our initial side of our angle, okay, made up of angle of ray AB. Okay, so our angle is going to open up from our initial side to our terminal side. Okay, so here's an example of an angle that's opening up in the positive direction. So this angle might be a positive 35 degrees. Angle B, on the other hand, now again, now our initial side still on the horizontal axis. So this is our initial side. Because it's on the horizontal axis. And now this opens below the angle. So 
this angle might be a negative 15 degrees. And again, here's our terminal side. Okay. Now, if for some reason, and this could happen, our angle started at our initial side here, but opened up, but opened up in all the way around in this direction. Well, that's more than 180 degrees. That's okay. Um, but that angle would have a positive measure. It might be a positive um, 300 degrees, say. Actually, with this, if it was a negative 15, since we know it is 360 degrees all the way around, uh, I would have been better off saying if we moved in the positive direction there, that angle would actually be 345 degrees. So a positive 345 or a negative 15. So a little introduction to the initial and terminal sides and positive and negative angles. You may remember from geometry, we have used acute, obtuse, right, and straight angles. An acute angle is an angle that is less than 90 degrees. So our angle measure, I'm just going to use X right now. Well, I'm not going to use X. Uh, since I labeled my angle A, I would say angle A, if it's acute, is going to be less than 90 degrees and greater than 0 degrees. An obtuse angle opens up and call that angle X and we would say X is greater than 90 and less than 180. And then we have special angles, as you remember, a right angle, which is denoted by the right angle box, and angle Y. So Y is exactly 90 degrees. If it's 90 degrees, and one second is no longer a right angle. So that's a right angle. That's an obtuse angle, obtuse and acute. And a straight angle, well, exactly like it says. It is a straight line. So angle y, x, z is going to be exactly 180 degrees. Complementary angles, as you remember from geometry as well, complementary angles are two angles whose sum measures exactly 90 degrees, or the complement of an angle is also expressed as 90 minus x. So if we said like angles A and B were complements, we'd know they'd add up to 90 degrees. Well, if this one is X, this angle must be 90 minus X, if those are going to be complements. Because this is, this is 20 degrees, well, that's going to be 70 or 90 minus 20. It's the rest of the degrees to get you to 90. And you can also calculate the measure of a couple complementary angles. So these two angles, the 3x angle and the 2x angle, those are, would be complements. And we could figure out the measure of each of those angles. 3x plus 2x equals 90. And then we would solve for x. And then replace X with that number and we could find out the measure of each of those two angles. So 5X equals 90. 
divide both sides by 5, we get x equals 18. So that's 3 times 18, and that's 2 times 18, which is 36 and 54. So that's how you do that kind of thing. And the same thing with supplements. Two angles whose sum measures 180 degrees are supplementary. So we could have some two angles that form a straight angle. And if that angle's x, that one would be 180 minus x. Or we could split them up again in the ratio. We could pick some ratio. Um, we could say, you know, that would be 5x, and that would be 3x. 5x plus 3x equals 180. And then we could solve. And I'll save that one for you to do in class. Those numbers aren't going to be too friendly, I don't think. Now let's take a look at our final topic here. And this might be a little bit new. Let's take a look at standard position of an angle. As I mentioned earlier, standard position will be on the horizontal axis. So an angle that starts at the origin okay, and opens up let's say into the second quadrant, this particular angle is in standard position. So standard position centered at the origin moves out along the positive x-axis. That will be the initial side. And then we have our terminal side. So let's just say that this angle was 135 degrees. Well, if we continued around and then back to our terminal side again, that blue angle would be 360 once all the way around plus 135 degrees, which is 495 degrees, which would mean that 495 and 135 degrees are co-terminal angles. Okay, those are co-terminal angles. They have the same terminating side. And of course, there's an infinite number of co-terminal angles with 135. We can continue going around and around and around and we keep adding 360. Okay, so that's 360 times n plus 135 would be the calculation for that. n would be the number of times that we go around. A quadrantal angle is a little different. A quadrantal angle is one that terminates right between two quadrants. My first angle here, the 135 and the 495, they ended in the second quadrant. Some angles end in the third quadrant, some will end in the first, some will end in the fourth. Okay. So as we saw earlier, this angle B here, this angle finished in the fourth quadrant. Angle A, at only 35 degrees, that finished in the first quadrant. So, a quadrantal angle, on the other hand, is one that ends right on the X or Y axis. So it's terminating side on the X or Y axis, which means our quadrantal angles are every 90 degrees. 90, 180, 
270 and 360 and then of course times n times the number of times around and we could go in the opposite direction too we could have a negative quadrantal angle and start here and end right there so negative 90 negative 180 negative 270 negative 360 if we are going in the clockwise direction so there's an introduction and a review of angles and we will see you in class.